Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and today we're looking at slicer programs. So slicer programs are the stage between, let's say, Blender making your 3D model and your printer printing out your 3D model. So you need to send it to a slicer program which works out all the intricacies that your printer needs. And when your slice is finished with the 3D model, then you can send it to your printer or put it on a memory card and place it in your printer. This is all part of a playlist going from 3D modeling and sculpting right through to 3D printing. If you like what I do, then do check out the other playlists and courses and so forth in the description. So the slicer program I'm using is Ultimaker Cura and the version is 4.8.0. I did a small amount of research, found this one and it worked fine. Now some people have commented that there are better ones. So if you think there's a better one out there, then comment below so people can take a look and remember to look at the comments to see what other people are saying. It's also important to say that this is not an in-depth look at this program. It really is just an overview of what a slicer program does. When you download Ultimaker Cura, it will ask you which printer you have and you go through the list, find your printer, and it's pretty much set up for you. So in Ultimaker Cura, this middle box with the grid at the bottom is a representation of your printer. So when you bring something in, you have to make sure it fits within the boundaries. To bring our model in, we can quite simply drag and drop our model in. So here's my SDL file, click and drag, and in it comes. So once you left click on your object, you can move it around, scale it here, rotate it, and other interesting things. Now someone did suggest that when you bring it in, you do rotate it slightly, because you can get a slight seam down the front. So pushing this off to the side seems like a good idea. Also check your scale, just look at the units. So this is around 86 millimeters, so around eight centimeters, which we'd already set up in Blender. So remember when you export, you times it by a thousand and it will come out the right size. Someone did ask me about working in Blender with sizes. When you first start out working in Blender and you're sculpting, keep it nice and big. So around the default cube size, which is sort of two meters or something, that just makes it much easier to sculpt and zoom in and out and all those sort of things and remesh. But when you come to 3D print, that's when you resize just before pressing export. Blender's very much set up for doing things that are big. So you have to change a few settings if you're working on small items. So to save that hassle, just reduce it before you export. So if you want to rescale, you can rescale in here, as you can see there. I'll just undo that with Control Z. To move around our scene, it's right click to move around. Middle click will strafe around and the wheel button to move in and out. Now one thing, if we come around to the bottom here, we can probably see some red marks and that's where it's saying there's some overhang these dots and things in here where the ear is the program will make supports so this doesn't collapse when it's printing so obviously it can't keep printing at this angle so it has to put in some sort of supports and you break those off afterwards but we can help this out by moving the model down just a touch so these sort of curves at the bottom here are going to be really awkward so I'll go to my move tool I'll bring it down and insert it into the bottom there. So we haven't lost too much there, but we'll give it a nice flat base. I can move it down just a touch further to around there. So I'm cutting off the base slightly and I might cut off too much there, probably around here, just where we don't need too much messy supports to have to cut out and break off. Because where you're breaking off supports, you do get tiny bits of plastic left and you have to sort of file them down or cut them off. Okay, so around there looks good. So we've rotated it, we've inserted it into the ground. Obviously this bit won't be printed. It will start where that sort of blue line is there. The other tools you'll want to look at are up the top here. So if I tick on that, this is kind of how detailed your printing is. And you can see up the top here, it's giving you an idea that this is extra fast, really rough and extra coarse. And down here we've got fine and extra fine. So you'll probably want to be about 0.1 extra fine if you're doing something really detailed perhaps. I was using point 0.1 so you can see the results. You will get a slight liney look across your model. You won't notice that unless you're looking really close. The infill is this sort of grid that fills in your shape. So it's not completely solid. It has this sort of cross hatched kind of honeycomb type structure type thing. So that obviously makes it more rigid and you can have more infill as you can see there or less infill. 20 seems to be that sort of magic number that people recommend. I'm not sure about the gradual infill, which apparently increases the amount of infill towards the top. I haven't seen any need for that. 
What you will need is to tick the supports, those are the supports I've been talking about, that it makes sure the overhang doesn't collapse. And ticking the adhesion gives it a small base, which makes it easier to cut off the base afterwards. So it's probably worth ticking that as well. Once you've done those things, you just come down to the bottom here and press slice. Now this is one of the reasons we need to reduce the geometry because that will take absolutely ages if it's really dense geometry. Once you press slice, it tells you how long it's going to take. So this is going to take three hours and I can preview it by pressing the preview button. So now we can see where all those supports are going. So they're coming in here and at the front here to support those areas of overhang and obviously the tail down here as well. So if you've got lots of these supports, it might look a little untidy and you might have to do a bit of tidying up of your prints by shaving down little bits of plastic that are left on from the supports. The last step then is to press save your file and that will save it in a file that your printer will understand and then you can put this on a memory stick and plug it into your printer and press print. It really does seem to be that straightforward. Here you can see a time lapse of it printing out. I'm using the A20 printer from GTEC, which I'm really pleased with and very impressed with. I'm also using a gray GTEC filament, which they were kind enough to supply for me. And apparently they are experts in filament. And I must say, I haven't had any problems with clogging or anything like that. It wasn't too complicated to change over the filament. That was fairly straightforward. And there's some great videos from YouTubers out there, which will talk you through those processes. And there is the finished wolf. So we've gone right from sculpting to 3D printing. And it was relatively painless, much more painless than I was expecting. And I'm really pleased with the results. I'm very surprised about how well they've done, especially with all the overhang and the supports. They tidy up pretty nicely, so I'm really pleased. Hopefully this has helped you out, maybe given you an idea of 3D sculpting to printing. And I'll see you next time.